Years after the Oblivion Crisis, a newly found plague became a serious danger for the inhabitants of Tamriel. The civilians believed that the impact of the Oblivion Gates would only be temporary, but little did they know that they have not seen the worst of it yet. So how is it going everyone? Welcome to the number one video on YouTube about this subject because I think it's the only one. You might think to yourself, why would he even do this? It's not even lore friendly. Well, that's where you're wrong and let me explain why. I have immersively implemented every single aspect of this plague and every single mod with my YouTube magic because I have some of that. Yeah. Get it guys? Because I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber, right? Number one YouTuber. So today we will take a look at what I've been working on, tackling mods that change the look and feel of the world, gameplay mods, creature mods, character mods, and to top it all off, a quest mod. A really cool one at that too. If this video is well received, I will make a series in which I change Skyrim's entirety like this. It will kind of be like Burns' game change, but you know, it, it won't be the same subject as him. Hopefully. And a different name. As for the world mods, we're going to start with Dark Forest of Skyrim. If you want to have all my visual effects as well, I recommend dynamic volumetric lighting and sun shadows, volumetric mists, and supreme and volumetric fog. It gives off a really ominous vibe and it will make your Skyrim pretty spooky. As the disease spread from person to person, it adapted and it started not only to spread onto the animals, but also to the plants and other forms of wildlife in Skyrim. This mod changes the lively trees of the forest into dead, infected ones, as well as mushrooms, showcasing how dark everything has become. The plague spread so far that it's literally everywhere in the province. Next up we have Oblivion Gates Remade and Oblivion Gates in Cities. We need an origin for our plague here, and that's where these two mods come in. Back during the Oblivion Crisis, the Daedra didn't come out to invade Tamriel alone. They came with a silent and slow-acting weapon, an infection that has very slowly started to develop years after the crisis, and people are only starting to notice it now. It has slowly evolved and it's finally to the point where it can infect humans and myrrh, and these oblivion gates are here to symbolize that the crisis has happened and that it's left this long-term effect on Skyrim. Moving forwards with Gallows of Skyrim. This adds a way for the people to punish the criminals within the major holds of the province. However, within our context, it's not only criminals that are sent to hang, but also the infected citizens. While still innocent, the Jarls believe that they have already passed as the infection entered their body. In order to stop the spread of the plague, the nobles and the guards would believe that sending them along with the infection back to oblivion directly would be a better way to go than suffering and turning into undead creatures. And this mod also adds to the dark atmosphere that we're going for. But that's not the only mod that does that. As we created the world that we're gonna survive in, we also need some gameplay mods to make the game harder and more immersive. Because that's what matters in Skyrim. Starting with the obvious realistic needs and diseases. This mod is one of the most popular mods for Old Rim and has also been ported to the Special Edition. It adds some immersive game mechanics such as hunger and thirst, but for the sake of our theme, we will focus on the diseases part. Diseases are indeed present in the vanilla game, but you can easily ignore them. Now with this mod, mm -mm -mm, this mod will make them very deadly. They become a real problem and make the game very hard if not treated well. This mod will make you avoid doing some things, such as sleeping in a dirty bandit camp because you could catch something. It's immersive, it's realistic, and most importantly, it's deadly. Or maybe not for you, but I suck at the game, so it's deadly for me. I also made sure to make the probabilities of me getting sick to be very high. Because I hate myself. When it comes to killings, Skyrim is already pretty violent and some kill moves are really cool. But while the dead bodies can spread diseases the way they are, I think that more gore would make the contagious more dangerous. And that's why we have Maximum Carnage. This mod would make the gore of the game super duper extraordinarily demonetizable. I won't get into too many details about this mod because Susan will get really mad at me. But I'll show you some quick scenes here because it looks cool and it adds to the feel of the game being dangerous and dirty. Exactly what we're going for for this video. In terms of the creatures of Skyrim, they have also evolved. I mean, not all of them, but some that got infected. They became sick to the point where their DNA changed and if it will ever get to the point where all the members of the species will get infected, 
they will go extinct and they will be replaced with these deadly creatures. So it's your responsibility to make sure you end the spread by killing the infected and protecting the healthy. We will have three mods from the Mihail Monsters and Animal series. We're going to start by taking a look at zombies. In our lore, these zombies would be the infected humans that have lived for too long. If they are lucky enough to survive the human genocide of the infected, they will turn into these creatures that are not only dangerous and contagious, but they also never age as they reach this point, meaning that they are immortal basically. As people learn about this, some actually craved that immortality and they also started to search for the infected so they can become like them, foolishly thinking that they will be strong enough to keep their consciousness. Dumbasses if you ask me. But this is why I will also have more vanilla bandits, as there will be more people searching for this immortality. This mod adds more bandits and that's it. Straightforward, but effective. Ghouls would also be a form of the undead that would be infected. I like to believe that humans would turn into zombies and the elves would turn into ghouls. They're both equally terrifying and they will try to spread their infection onto you. Next up would be zombie dogs and skinned hounds. As I said earlier, the disease is beginning to spread to, onto animals as well, and the dogs would be the first of the creatures. The reason for that would be that they will be closely interacting with the humans, which is where the plague started. The dogs would lose their eyes and their vision completely, and they will 100% rely on their sense of smell to navigate and attack. The models are really well made. I mean, they're really ugly, they're ugly as hell, but they're cool. Next up would be our biggest creature mod on the list, Dragnarok. Did that sound cool? No, it didn't. <laughs> this mod adds the literal end of the world to Skyrim. There are four phases. The outbreak, the invasion, Dragnarok itself, and the aftermath. And that decides which stage of the Draugr invasion Skyrim is currently in. While these are not the same zombies we mentioned earlier, they still qualify as a form of undead. I like to think that they have been sent by the Daedra so they can start attacking at the same time as the plague. You know, so we can like spread to the province and kill everyone more easily. That's Daedra's plan, I guess. Daedra's plan. Daedra's plan. This mod actually makes for some really cool scenes. The Draugr would start by attacking smaller settlements and then it would move on to attack bigger cities and make for some really cool big fights. The citizens would fight for survival, but I simply hope that Nazim would be among the first to go. To be honest, I didn't see him either on the floor or walking in the city after the attack. I guess one could hope, or maybe I just disabled him earlier in, in a different save and I don't remember. Oh well. Now while the infection doesn't actually spread in the game, it is nice to roleplay and pretend the plague is a real thing and that it's deadly. So you would have to protect yourself. And we're moving on to the player related mods. Starting with the armor mod. It is nice to pretend that the only way to protect your body from the contagion is to have the proper apparel. Toxing Doctor Outfit would be the armor that I would recommend if you'd like to play with these mods. This would be an immersive way to play and protect Skyrim from the plaguing enemies. Plus, you're immune to basically all diseases with this outfit, so that's really cool. And immersive! Can I get my immersion medal yet? Please? I'm trying. I'm trying my best here. Come on. Come on! You would also need a place to hide. As the major cities and holds of Skyrim are not safe, you need to isolate yourself to minimize the risk of contagion. Does that sound familiar? It's what I'm doing right now. That's why I have Toxin Doctor Laboratory. This is an abandoned laboratory that our character has discovered, which is also a place where he has decided to hide. As he is one of the rare fighters of the plague, he has settled here to study the problem. And that's why I would also recommend to weirdly collect body parts from these affected creatures. I know, it's weird, but uh, it's immersive, right? Okay, you can unsubscribe now. That's fair. I, I don't mind. <laughs> I deserve it. In terms of combat, you should use poison spells. As you'd play as a doctor and a scientist, well, that makes sense, right? This mod adds a new magic school to Skyrim, which is poison. And you're gonna have to master it, as it's not magic for the elementals, but magic that was created to both heal and kill creatures with using the knowledge of nature. That's also something I made up, just by the way, I, I just thought it was really cool and uh, it's a way to implement it into the story, so here you go. The visual effects of these spells are also amazing. Their green tint also adds to the undead feel of the playthrough and makes for some cool, amazing shots, if I do say so myself. 
and they work really well with the doctor outfit. You're welcome. In addition to magic, I think it is also important to focus on alchemy. But I mean, I, was, I never really cared about the alchemy system in the game, to be honest. But, you know, I'd like to change that slightly. Pick your poison will add a book, actually many books, with all the ingredients that you would need to make potions. And this is very useful for those of you who have not created many potions in the game and you don't know by heart which potion makes for a cure disease. Which ingredients makes for the cure disease potion or the healing potion or the magic. You know what I mean. There's many potions in the game. You're smart. You got this. You're doing great. I'm doing terrible. <laughs> if you want to completely revamp the alchemy system, I would suggest complete alchemy and cooking overhaul. That is actually if you want to make potions and stuff. I didn't really bother with it too much, honestly. I'm still a potion noob, even in Minecraft, in any game, basically. But if you wanted to play with it, here you go. And as for the final mod, I have Death Consumes All. The plague threatens everyone. Sooner or later, we all have to put down our differences to face it. We're just doing it before the rest of the world. This mod would give you a pretty cool questline that will have you play for about 10 hours. It would have you try to stop a plague from consuming Skyrim, and it all starts with Livia. No, 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 not Lydia. Livia in Dragon's Reach. They didn't think this through, did they? Or maybe they did. They did it on purpose. They did it on purpose. I will, however, say that I did not play it. I know, I know, I'm reviewing a mod without having played it. I'm stupid. But that's because I was actually thinking that maybe I'd play these mods in a video. I'll tell you what, if this video gets 10,000 views, I'll do it. 10,000 views, and I'll have a video of me playing with these mods. What do you mean? I'll never get to 10,000? Okay, 5,000 views. Final offer. <laughs> and that will be it for the mods in this video, so I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. This was really cool, a really cool concept, so I hope you enjoyed. Maybe I'll make a series out of it. I know I already have Changing Skyrim with Nereva, in which we're not really changing Skyrim much. We're just kind of updating it, you know, to make it a next-gen game or whatever. But I also want to have this series with videos like this, in which I transform Skyrim into other things. Skyrim transformation you know maybe sky formation i got it i got it that's the name of it that's gonna be the first episode of sky formation with nariba <laughs> so today's common shout out is and i will bloom in winter that's the name of the person not something i will do you never watch the clone wars dislike and unsub too uncultured redeem yourself uh i mean i never watched the clone wars but I'm a nerd. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I got mangas. Uh, th that counts for something, right? What else? I got a kunai. Uh, that's still Naruto. Okay, something else. I guess I'm reading other books as well. What about some Lego sets? Are these redeemable? What about this painting I made when I was 15 of the map of Skyrim? Does that count? A spiral plushie? Anyone? Am I worth anything? So I loaded up this older game called Skyrim I started making videos people be admiring Well on one hand it gets pretty tough I can't help to admit that it's some really cool stuff I get back in the game after I played so many times I thought it would get boring after committing so many crimes Did you know the regular chicken is considered a person? Now that's a dumb feature that ruins my...